we are back in Rome uncovering all you need to know. We've got three coins in the fountain, two amazing restaurants, and many tips on how to get around the Eternal City. Then we bring in one of our top bartenders, Frankie, who has a hoodoo tea recipe that is delicious. Then we take you to a Mexican restaurant in eastern North Carolina that is as friendly as it is authentic. And as Mexican as that is, we take you to a nearby golf course that serves up some southern down-home challenges and serpent fun. We are taking you all over. Get ready to enjoy. Salute, jet setters. We are in Roma, and frankly, we can't get enough of Roma. As you can see. Now, we have another Roman jet setter exploration for you. Now, this time, we are going to a famous piazza that has great restaurants and people watching. That is right. Plus, the famous fountain immortalized in many films and two restaurantes that we consider off the chain and you will too. Plus, a converted pagan temple. So, let's go indulge in the eternal city. We begin at the iconic Pantheon in the Piazza della Rotonda. It is considered the best preserved monument of Imperial Rome. And you will want to take your time to drink it all in. It's pretty impressive, both inside and out. Make sure you look up. The circular opening at the top is known as the Oculus. It's about 30 feet across and lets the only light into the Pantheon. The purpose was not only to illuminate the interior, but also let those inside envision the heavens. The original temple was built on the site in 27 BC under Emperor Augustus by his general Agrippa. Then it was entirely rebuilt in 120 AD by Emperor Hadrian. In 608 AD it was turned into a church and like other churches in Rome a dress code is enforced so short skirts or shorts and bare shoulders are not permitted. Today, it is also a great hangout for folks in the evening. It's free to enter and audio guides are available for about five euro. Another great spot for locals to hang out and take a stroll is Piazza Navona. In ancient times, this was a place for Roman circuses. Now it's a fabulous piazza to hang out and people watch with lots of great eateries lining the borders. Now notice there are several well-known fountains here created by the famous sculptor and architect Bernini. Getting around Rome is fairly easy and there are several modes of transportation available. We suggest walking. It is a fun way to see the local facets of the city and you will want to walk off all that yummy food that you're eating too. Now taxis are plentiful. Hail one from the street or use this app, My Free Taxi. Find it in the app store under Free Now My Taxi. You can hook up your credit card and it works just like Uber. If you are grabbing a cab on the street, keep in mind that most only take cash, so have it on hand. If taxis aren't in your budget, you can also use the bus or the metro. The bus will get you closer to your destination. The metro in Rome has only two lines, so you may end up walking a bit more if you decide to take that. Keep in mind to have comfy walking shoes as many streets are cobblestones and uneven. Now, if you feel like biking it, Uber offers Jump, electric bikes that you can pick up and drop off around the city. Just download the Jump by Uber app from the App Store to access. And those are your Jet Setter tips for getting around Rome. Prego! Next, we head to Trevi Piazza for a glimpse of the iconic and well-known Fontana di Trevi, or Trevi Fountain. Now, this is free to visit, and it's the work of Nicola Salvi's waterworks from the Baroque era, influenced by Bernini. Made famous in the 1954 American film Three Coins in the Fountain is the tradition of throwing coins to guarantee your return to the Eternal City. And as you can see, many may not return because of, well, bad throwing arms. <laughs> and it's estimated that about 3,000 euros are thrown into the fountain each day. Don't worry, the money is collected and donated to support Rome's needy. Now what you see today dates back to the 18th century. And the fountains go back to the year 19 BC when the Roman aqueduct was constructed, an important building block 
that made ancient Rome what it was. The aqueduct brought water to the Roman baths and the fountains of central Rome. The fountain was built at the end of the aqueduct at the junction of three roads. Thus, the three streets, or literally three ways, Trevier, gives us the name Trevi Fountain. Near these sites are two restaurant jewels given to us by two of our jet setters. The first is La Pace del Palato near Piazza Navona. It's an enjoyable walk with lots of fun along the way, including music and bustling activity. La Pace is a great family-run restaurant that will leave you wanting to return again and again. The vibe is homey and warm. First, we were presented with an amuse-bouche of sorts, an on-the-house type of antipasti with aubergines, and it was delightful. Especially with the warm bread. This is eggplant and sun-dried tomatoes that are slowly roasted. It was slightly sweet with a nice touch of bitterness to balance it out. Next, we took a deep dive into the carbonara with truffles. This might be the best we have ever had. Truffles are a tradition to add to carbonara in the fall and winter. As is usual in Italy, the pasta was perfectly al dente and the carbonara was classic with eggs and cheese. It is light and velvety. There's no oil or cream here, the way it is meant to be. The pork cheek, which looks like bacon, gave the carbonara a nice salty bite. Then we had this deliciousness. It is stracchetti di filetto con ricola, pacchino e scaglie di parmigiano. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And so what is it? Well, it's sliced beef with arugula salad, pacchino tomato, which are mini cherry tomatoes, and parmigiano cheese. The tender beef is sautéed brilliantly and complemented by the baby tomatoes, peppery arugula, tangy vinaigrette, and a sprinkling of freshly grated parmesan cheese. Romans love salad at the end of the meal as a digestive. We would have done that except for the tiramisu. This was a bright and creamy concoction, very frothy and airy light with a buzz of espresso and smooth chocolate. Then time for another perfect digestive, limoncello. It's given complimentary here, which is another tradition in many Italian restaurants. And we stayed for yet one more after dinner tradition, grappa. It was earthy and nutty. This might have been the smoothest grappa we ever had. La Pache was recommended by our jet setter friend, Kathy Ray, who was spot on and who had only been there a week before us. So we had some fun with Renato, the owner, and he easily remembered Kathy. This woman yes. introduced us here. Do you remember her? Yes, I remember. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was she a good customer? <laughs> now, was she drunk and dancing on the tables? Yes. She was? Yes. Oh, okay. See, I told you. This next hidden gem came from our jet setter friend, Loris, who has been a longtime resident in Rome. He recommended Coso Wine Restaurant, a Roman style eatery with a modern touch. And like Kathy, he nailed it. Coso is a local's hangout near the Spanish Steps, which we will share with you in another segment. We chose a local white wine, Illuminati Pecorino, made from the Pecorino grape, not Pecorino cheese. Yes, and if you can imagine a Prosecco without the bubbles, that's what this is like. Lots of citrus dry, but not too crisp, and no oak or butter. We suggest trying this because you probably can't get this outside of Italy. And it went perfectly with this appetizer, flowers of pumpkin and zucchini. Now the zucchini is lightly breaded and sautéed with a fresh sprinkling of sea salt. The flowers of pumpkin are a light pastry filled with mozzarella cheese, pureed pumpkin, and briny anchovies. You have to get this. It hits on all flavor levels and melts in your mouth. Next, we had a Coso house specialty, a baked potato. Sounds mundane, right? Wrong. This is Rome. <laughs> the potato is baked in foil and stuffed with, wait for it, a classic carbonara filling. It is deliciously creamy and light on the inside, while the potato skin is nice and crispy on the outside. Sure, it is an appetizer, but it would complement any entree. And we highly recommend the bacala. This is salted fish. For this, it is shredded, then coated with egg wash and breadcrumbs, and then it's molded and sauteed in olive oil. The fish was sweet and mild in taste, but dense in consistency. 
And the sauce here is the key. It is a whipped up combo of chickpeas and prawns with a spicy salsa from Africa added in. For a New England boy who loves cod, this might be one of the tastiest fish recipes I have ever had. I would only have fish sticks this way. And the bakala comes with chicory, which looks like spinach, but is less bitter and more of a cross between romaine and arugula with a spinach consistency. After the meal, we had a Montenegro, lots of herbs, aromatic with bitters in a perfect after-dinner drink to settle your stomach. Coso keeps its modern theme with plenty of TVs to watch football. Now, the Wi-Fi password is printed on the placemat along with the website, social media sites, email, and phone, so you can stay in touch with them. As modern as they are, they exude true Italian hospitality. It started raining pretty hard when we were about to leave, and they gave us an umbrella to take with us, not worried about us ever returning it. And we used that umbrella quite a bit. And then later, when we departed, we left the umbrella with the hotel desk to pay the kindness forward to somebody else. In true Familia style. We have given you a number of great restaurants here. Now, here's what's different, though, about Rome. Almost every restaurant you go into is fabulous. So don't be afraid to explore and try different things. Ciao, Bellas. Next, we fly you to Canton, Ohio to enjoy a unique drink whipped up by one of our Jet Setter bartenders. Frankie dazzles us with his hoodoo tea and shows you how to make it. For a refreshing and extremely healthy drink to go with everything, try this one. It is called A1C and it's conceivably the healthiest drink ever made. A1C is the first scientifically designed diabetic drink in the history of the world and we love it. And it's just not for people with diabetes although it is great for that. Anyone can enjoy the wonderful health benefits and delicious flavor. Go to a1cdrinks.com to try it and use coupon code JETSETTER1 for a 5% discount. Cheers Jet Setters! <laughs> So our friend Frankie at the Hyatt whipped up a spring summer cocktail for us. You've got to try this. It's amazing. And we are in Canton, Ohio, and the drink is called Hoodoo Tea. All right, so you do three halves of muddled strawberry and two leaves of basil, fresh basil. You got to muddle that up really good. Use a flat muddler to really smash it. Add ice to your shaker. You do two shots of either bourbon or whiskey. Crown Royal and general us usual whiskeys are a little bit sweeter. Bourbon's got a little bit more bitterness to it. And then I use this homemade sage simple syrup that really brings a great note to the drink. Like I use two cups of water um, I add whole leaf sage into that water, bring that all the way to a boil, add the uh, two cups of sugar, stir it up really good, let that uh, sage sit in there, turn the, turn the uh, flame off, and let that sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Shake that up, and serve of rice. I mean, I had it in the middle of winter and it was delicious, but if people want a refreshing drink, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, is it more of a gal's drink than a guy's drink? I wouldn't say so, because, I mean, the, if you use the bourbon especially, if a guy doesn't like sweeter drinks, it's very even. It's not too overly sweet. Um, it, the bourbon really evens it out to be a little bit more smooth of a drink instead of a sweet drink. It is good with Cajun food, because Cajun food's always pretty spicy, so it's good to balance it out with some sweetness. My favorite part is definitely the sage simple syrup. I think it adds just, it's, it's delicious. And I like that it's not, it doesn't taste overly strong as a drink, even though it's got two full shots of the whiskey in it. Um, it just tastes almost like a sweet tea. It is the perfect spring summer drink. And that sage, that really yeah. makes the difference because how often do you have a sage in a drink? Not that often. And then mixing it with basil. And the 
strawberries. And then the strawberries. The strawberries bring that spring. fresh spring summer flavor to everything. And in this muddling it the way he did, and he gave us a great tip in there. It's just phenomenal. Still ahead, we jet down to the Myrtle Beach area. First, some authentic Mexican, and then some down home Southern golf. We are in Cozumel, Mexico. You may have noticed, but the majority of Undercover Jet Setter is shot on the iPhone. So that means you can create your own TV show. You may want to have great vacation videos. Well, we've made it easier for you with our book. It's called The TV Studio In Your Hand. It's a quick read, and you can get it here. So bring us along for your next vacation video or your new TV show. And welcome back. Shalote, North Carolina is, well, it's right in between... Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Wilmington, North Carolina. And it's a coastal beach town that for years just really catered to summer beachgoers. But it is also growing as many people are moving in. And that means more good restaurants. We found one that folks say is the best Mexican in the area. So we stopped into San Jose's Mexican restaurant in Shalote, North Carolina. We wanted to find out why so many people were recommending it. Well, first, it has a great bar. You can sit here and have a cold one with friends and take in a ball game. The food and the drinks measure up as well. We tried their Millionaire Margarita. Now, this was surprisingly fresh. It kind of had the feel of a skinny margarita. Mm, not a lot of sugar, but plenty of fresh lime and orange that didn't drown out that gorgeous burnt taste of the Silver Patron. Another good sign, the freshly made guacamole. Our waiter, Kevin, whipped up the perfect guac with nice avocado chunks and a touch of cilantro. We got two sizzling fajitas. The first was the mixed fajita. This had chicken and steak. Now the second was fajita texana, which had beef and chicken, but also shrimp. The beans, cheese, and rice were perfect complements to the sizzling fajitas. Now, the surprise hit may have been this fish dish, Palazza del Mar. It has tilapia, shrimp, zucchini, squash, corn, chipotle sauce, and rice. This was luscious and savory. Now, San Jose's has plenty of traditional Mexican dishes like this chicken burrito that was moist and flavorful. In addition, San Jose's has a different lunch menu that can take care of the business crowd in a quick way. We understand why this is a hangout that brings in people from miles away. San Jose's Mexican restaurant in Shalote, North Carolina. You know, lots of golfers who actually come down to the Myrtle Beach area They'll say that, you know, they will make San Jose's one of their stops on each time they come down. Wow. Well, speaking of golf, when we come back, we will take you to a fun golf course not too far away that is named after a snake. Need a hotel deal anywhere in the world, including guest houses and apartments? Check out jetsetterdeals.com you will get the best deals on hotel rooms around the world, up to 60% off. It is better than direct search on other booking engines. The price is final with no hidden fees and no membership fee. Just be a fan of Undercover Jet Setter. Get a grip on your game with the revolutionary new The One Glove. Just ask these long drive competitors. I'll be wearing the glove uh, to get that competitive advantage with grip and uh, try to send one about 350. Well, it, it worked. Uh, it locked in the grip. The uh, the tackiness uh, held through uh, all the rounds, and uh, the control and the feel of it is definitely something you gotta you gotta give it a try to understand uh, the purpose behind it. But hey, it got the job done, and I, uh, I appreciate it. Its revolutionary fabric is soft, durable, and washable, lasting three times longer than a regular glove. Look, we, we made it through uh, five rounds, uh, finished second place, had the longest ball. I mean, I think that this is a great market for anybody looking to increase their grip, but also not be restricted by a whole glove and be sweating through that. Women golfers can wear rings and not bother their nails. Order at the one golfglove.com get a discount with coupon code jetsetter welcome back now snakes can be found near golf courses but usually you don't want to bring that up <laughs> and 
One Myrtle Beach golf course, with its down-home southern humor, they actually have fun with the snakes. We take you to Diamondback. Diamondback Golf Course, about 20 miles outside of Myrtle Beach, is an old country course with new renovations. We brought one of our favorites down the middle, Dougie, to give us his assessment. Oh, I'm right away up there. It's, um, it's an upper tier course. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's a real challenge to play with Diamondback. So, how do you navigate Diamondback? Well, the first thing is to get over the name. Rattlesnakes, that's one of those things, you know, our name's Diamondback. We have all our T's coded as snakes, whether it's a Diamondback, a Rattlesnake, a Coral Snake, Garter Snake. So, we sort of live off the snake name, but we don't really have as many snakes as what uh, people would think. We're just like any other golf course down here in the Myrtle Beach area. We have our own snakes. Everybody says water snakes, garden snakes. Now, being in the woods like we do, yeah, there are a few rattlesnakes, but you can find rattlesnakes at other golf courses, too. The second thing is to get around that old country sense of humor when it comes to rattlers. Yeah, but you got a pretty scary one sitting in there in the uh, clubhouse. We do. We have our mascot. Uh, that was some western Arizona diamond back, but we, we have fun with everybody telling that, oh, yeah, we killed it out on the first hole when they were building the golf course to give everybody, like, oh. You know, so we have snakes laying around. We have a snake. That's sort of wrapped up in our logo uh, a jar ball there that is there. So people reach in and see a snake, they come jumping back. And it's kind of fun. I, I just wish I could get a, a remote control one where I could have it actually move in front of somebody, but I'm afraid somebody would <laughs> have a heart attack then. Just think of it as an extra incentive to stay on the new fairways and the greens. At Diamondback, we have 419 Bermuda fairways. And last year, we actually... Uh, planted Sunday Bermuda on our greens so they're a year old and they're in fantastic shape that's probably the best grass that I've ever been around with and you better be accurate hitting those fairways and greens it's not a real open course it's uh, you have to hit long straight drives and some very accurate um, approach shots this is a very tight course and one of the courses I tell all my students and I, pl I coach a high school golf team here that if you can play and keep the ball in the fairway at Diamondback you can play anywhere along the Grand Strand. The signature hole is the par 4 17th. The, the key to playing that hole is, is don't worry about the water. You see the water out there. We know we have water to the right. and There's a creek that runs across the fairway. But if you can keep it down the left side of the fairway, that opens up the green to a, a relatively easy, well, hopefully easy second shot in. You know, you don't want to pull the ball to the left. You've got bunkers and water to the left and long. So you just try to keep it in that area, but you want to bring it down that left side and then come into the uh, green from that angle. Now, I played it exactly the way Patrick said. I kept it left, but had a long putt after my second shot, only to three putt for a bogey. While Dougie was in the right fairway, partially blocked by trees. You were, you were a little bit further back and to the right, so that, that, was a, that was a tough second shot to get on the green. It was. I, I hit a, a good shot in there. That's one of my few today, but I hit a good shot in there. He barely missed his birdie putt for a ho-hum par. Lots of golfers in the region don't think Diamondback is ho-hum. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. I, uh, some of the guys I've played golf with that live down in Myrtle Beach near Market Commons, they're even talking about it. And uh, now They've actually been here to play and enjoyed it, so they're coming back. What's the best way to get a tee time here? The best way to get a tee time is call us directly. You can call 843-756-3264, or you can go online at uh, PlayDiamondbackGolf.com. We're there. Make your tea time. We would love to have you out here. Now, did you see any snakes out there? Uh, not on that trip. Now, the only one that I really saw was that scary one that was trapped inside the glass box. <laughs> Most of the snakes, they actually stay away from you on the golf course. The only time to worry about them is when you go into the woods. So, don't go into the woods. <laughs> Good advice. And we will have plenty more golf, travel, food, and wine. Just keep it on this channel. Cheers. Delray Beach is booming with visitors and residents for many reasons. A big reason is the food. There are so many new and ethnically varied restaurants. One we heard about and had to try was Lionfish Del Rey with its modern coastal cuisine. The food, the drink, and our undercover Jet Setter in-house guide were top-notch. She works as a bartender, but she is also the perfect spokesperson. We are talking about Katie Malarkey. 
I am malarkey, but there's no nonsense here. <laughs> do, you have to, do you have to put up with that a lot with somebody calling you malarkey? Here and there, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we wanted a lot of this kind of malarkey as we took all of Katie's recommendations. First, she recommended an opening cocktail with a mix of nationalities called the Atlantic Buzz. It's a nice tequila-based cocktail with a house-made raspberry basil syrup. We also do ancho verde to add a little kick to it, and it's gonna be made with Casadores Reposado. Yeah, you get a little smokiness from the ancho verde. It's made from the poblano pepper. And then we have a little sweet but spicy going on, a little balance there. The raspberry basil makes it a little sweeter, and then the ancho gives you that kick. comes together beautifully. Before an appetizer, Katie guided us to the Hiramasa hand roll that wrapped Mexican around Japanese. It's going to be almost like a mini sushi burrito, stuffed inside, wrapped with soy paper on the outside. comes with a little jalapeno. The Hiramasa is a nice white fish rich and savory and flavor in the Amberjack family. And what was so great about it was that it was, even though it was wrapped, it was kind of light. Yeah, they're nice and light. It comes with one for happy hour, so if you're, you can get a few of them, you're feeling a little more hungry. But yeah, it's got a good crunch. <laughs> you know, we love the crunch. <laughs> for an entree, we were expecting the namesake, lionfish dish. Instead, Katie went down under with four Australian char-grilled lollipop lamb chops that were rich and succulent. So the lamb chops are going to be four lollipops. It's um, Australian, very high quality Australian. Uh, it comes with a wal walnut grumelade, so that adds a nice texture to the lamb. When you bite into it, you're going to get a little bit of those walnuts in there. It comes on top of a nice carrot butter, which adds a little bit of softness to the dish. And then we have rosemary ash sprinkled on there to pull it all together. It comes with a nice little bone marrow palm, is what we call it. It's essentially a hollowed out bone cut in half. You have a little bit of a marrow there and then basically mashed potatoes inside. It was superb and paired nicely with a Pinot Noir. Now Lionfish is a short walk from Hyatt Place where we stayed and got our recommendation from the bartender Chris. To find out more about Lionfish, go to their website, which is lionfishdelray.com. may not have noticed, but the majority of Undercover Jet Setter is shot on the iPhone. So that means you can create your own TV show, or you may want to have great vacation videos. Well, we've made it easier for you with our book. It's called The TV Studio In Your Hand. It is a quick read, and you can get it here. So bring us along for your next vacation video or your new TV show.